It is not the blocky, amorphic mesh. It is your couch with a very clear outline that appears to match it precisely. In the back end, they have that data. What I want to talk about today is the implementation of AR by Meta and how it sucks. Maybe six months ago, almost a year ago, I don't know. I made a video with a Quest 2 looking forward to the Quest 3 and I went on about why the depth sensor in the Quest 3 was gonna be such a game changer. Think of all the things that you could do. Never mind the fact that the Meta Quest Pro was <laughs> like wildly expensive. It was marketed to, to businesses and conglomerates and it's not for you, it's not for me. And when they had eye tracking, they did nothing with it. They, they were constantly obsessed with having your avatar blink when you blink, which isn't for you. It's for everybody else. So as far as you not taking part in any kind of a third party group multiplayer thing, then it was never for you. You, you were never meant to benefit from it in any way. And, and the entire time we were thinking, why aren't they implementing this better? The, the most that they did that, that made things better for us was foveated rendering. And it, it was, you know, it, it was hit and miss. I mean, Red Matter had, had made use of it, but it wasn't widely adopted. And they weren't advertising it, like they weren't pushing it to the consumers anyhow. And then meanwhile, Apple comes out with eye tracking and, and they do the, the pinch thing. So you look at whatever you want in a minor little just thing of your finger and, and you're interacting with stuff and, and it's brilliant. But Meta didn't have the forethought to, to implement anything like that because they're, they're constantly in this, this bubble where they're, they're thinking about one thing and it's like, how can we make our shitty avatars do more things? And so because Meta is so bent on the metaverse which is a whole different video and because their field of view is so narrow the scope of what they want to do with this product they're always like 10 steps behind not the technology necessarily but how it's implemented what they do with it and so ar this is what my video is culminating in this in the settings of the meta quest 3 you can you can set up different rooms this is my kitchen this is my living room this is my bedroom and you can save these profiles and using the, the depth sensor you look around your room you scan it you look at the ceiling look at the floor the bed and it's it's kind of a rough approximation but it outlines from the shape of your pillow to the garbage can in the corner it outlines everything perfectly so perfectly that after you build your room it's clear that there's a mesh building up your walls and your ceiling over everything whether you can see it real time or not that mesh is there it's saved and there's something there's a process after you save that mesh for a, a, an instant you look at your couch and it is not the blocky amorphic mesh it is your couch with a very clear outline that appears to match it precisely. In the back end, they have that data. They at least have this rough approximation of your room, which leads me to a couple things. First, why is it that after we scan our room in its entirety, it insists on taking what is a complicated couch with, with armrests that uh, climb up over the, the height of the seat itself or the, the back cushions that go up. Why is it that, that despite having all that data, they still insist on using these generic blocks, these cubes that don't have the curvature or the geometry to helpfully match anything in our room, despite them having the data to provide that kind of rough approximation. In a game like World Beyond, where it makes use of that data before the game p starts up. It, it accesses that uh, the spatial data that you've saved on Meta. And then <laughs> despite having all that data, they devolve to these 
cubes so that when the animal jumps up on your couch, it's not jumping up on the couch that's this complex thing with pillows and, and armrests and, and gradual bumps along it. It's jumping up on a flat cube. On top of that, the back of the couch, I mean, it's, it's not registered unless you want to take the time and build your couch with cubes, which even then will not match it accurately enough to, to warrant the work it would take to do it. Then if you don't do that, then this game basically creates a, a world that you can see through your wall and that wall extends past your couch. Never mind the fact that, you know, we still don't have occlusion so that when you hold up your hand, it's not stuck behind the thing that you're seeing. That's another thing altogether. It's weird that for a device that's designed, marketed as a, an AR accessory, almost a year later, uh, they don't have that. <laughs> I mean, once again, it comes back to, are they making the best use of the technology? Some other developers are taking it and, and using it minimalistically and it works. I mean, Demio is widely received as being a great AR experience, tabletop tennis. I really like Synth Riders. I think that works really well. But by and large, it's underutilized. Meta is just constantly going to be a, a couple steps behind Apple in this regard. And it's not because Apple has a, a more powerful uh, processor in their headset. They do, but it's, it's not just that. It's, it's what are they doing with the technology? There is nothing that would have stopped uh, Meta from implementing uh, the, the eye tracking and, and pinching on the Quest Pro. They could have done that. They could have found a way, but they weren't interested in going that route. Which, which takes me to the, this thing where they've got mapped out rooms, these spatial dimensions that they've mapped out with the depth sensors. I mentioned they have all that data. Take that data and give us a raw mesh that basically represents the couch. Then I don't know why or how or if I can expect them to take it the step further that they need to. I don't know why we don't have, you know, making use of that mesh. I think that in some kind of a low poly form, we'd be able to take that mesh and turn our room into Temple of Doom, something, bricks and, and vines. Uh, and then once you have that, once they have that mesh, which they do, they have all that data, why can't they uh, insert some kind of a, a simple uh, shooter? Uh, something comes into the room and you defend yourself. From one room to another, a hallway from the living room to the kitchen, I've mapped out my downstairs completely. Uh, with a couple hiccups, which I will also get into. But it just seems like they're not making the most of this. And if it's a limitation of the CPU, then that's something else. That's just fine. But I have no reason to think that that's all it is. I think that they are genuinely disinterested in doing much of anything creative, honestly. I mentioned that I've mapped my entire downstairs. I, I've mapped from the the restroom downstairs, to the kitchen, to the hallway, to the living room. I've mapped the ceilings. I've mapped every wall. I've mapped the front door and I've mapped half of the stairwell that goes upstairs. It's a lot of data, but it's there. It's saved. I know that in its current form, that's taking up a lot of bandwidth because if I take that map and the, even if I just, I position myself in the living room, I'm not going anywhere, but the data represented in that, that scan is huge. It kind of crashes games when I play in that respective play space. In something like The World Beyond or Synth Riders, even though I'm just in my living room, I'm not going anywhere, it wigs out and it kind of projects as if my room has jettisoned out miles, miles. Like there's just this path that disappears uh, out of out of my periphery. I just, I can't see it. It's too far. It ends in a, a pinpoint. And so when I try playing with anything like that, even in some kind of a simple situation such as Synth Riders, it limits me to like maybe three frames a second and it glitches out and it's just unusable. So that may be a reason that we don't have this auto-populated you know, AI synthesized dungeon crawler in our house because just mapping a downstairs, you know, 
a downstairs space in its entirety takes up too much bandwidth. But then if it does, they shouldn't uh, allow us to, to scan that far. I mean, we can't scan as far as we want, as far as creating uh, a boundary. You know, there is a limit. Um, it's grown since the Quest 1, but we can't just go for miles. And I think that if if the the size of the room that we scan has some kind of a limitation or clearly uh, an effect on the game that we're playing, if we scan it too big, they don't tell us, hey, by the way, uh, maybe you should make this smaller. I would gladly run up against a wall and say, okay, you've scanned 15 feet by 15 feet. That's as big as we're going to let you do it. And I'd be fine. Cut it off. Good. I don't need to map my entire downstairs, but take the data that you have and do something meaningful with it. And so, you know, this video ultimately is going to be me asking you, do you think AR is a gimmick? Some of these games, they make good use of it, but it won't be fully realized until we have this issue of occlusion resolved. I'd like to know, what are your favorite games? What do you guys think of this experience? What would you like to see? What do you think can be done with the current tech that we have? And what do you think should be done and that will be done by Apple or someone else if Meta does not do it first? Because in my mind, that's an inevitable thing. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for being here. You guys have been watching Bringhurst VR. I'll catch you next time.